and that kind of brings me to Scott Seeley. Uh, here's a guy who only played 12 games for you last year, but you know uh, was always thought of as maybe this this guy that could that, that could finish and score goals. Um, I mean, with bringing Lenhard in, um, and then of course having Wondolowski maybe playing that uh, more reserve striker role. What role does Scott have on this team in the coming season? Yeah, I do think he's very likely going to be, you know, an off the bench provider for us at this point. Although, if Frank Yallop continues to move away from his traditional four four two and try this withdrawn forward thing, I mean, Frank has always been a four four two coach for years. So the fact that he's considering four three three or a four five one or anything like that is mm-hmm. pretty much revolutionary. Mm-hmm. And he started doing it a little bit towards the end of the season as we got in the playoffs last year. He started to tinker with it. And I think a lot of us felt that when Seeley dropped into that role as a creative playmaker a little bit, he actually started to blossom a little. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, I think he is one of those guys that I don't see him necessarily being a, in our starting 11, but I think he potentially, you know, uh, give the starters a run and, and will be good at coming off the bench and be supporting us in that, that type of play. Hmm. And then Ellis McLaughlin, here's a young guy. Uh, I guess he had a trial with the Sounders. That didn't work out. Uh, went to Hertha Berlin, uh, too, for a while. Um, so you have some, some potential young guys there outside of Lenhart, who you could almost count him as a veteran now. And, of course, Wondolowski mm-hmm. definitely is. So you've got McLaughlin. You've got Seeley. You've got Wondolowski. You've got so I mean, there's a lot of potential there. But how does Ellis fit into this? Is is he going to be thrown out on the wing as well, maybe throughout the season? I think it really is going to be dictated by injuries and and the play of our starters. I mean, I think uh, one of the people we're leaving out is Ryan Johnson, who had a tough year last year, but had a, a pretty solid year the year before for us. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems that even when he struggles. Um, coaches are partial and, and want him out there on the field trying to make things happen. So I, I can't see from what I've heard throughout preseason, he's still getting a lot of playing time. coffee has been injured a little bit, so there's some talk that even if they do this, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, I say this diamond formation or whatnot up at the top, that, that RJ might be one of the guys up there dueling with Convy for a position. So I think some of these young guys are going to have a tough time finding the playing time right off the bat, unless we see a lot of struggling from the starting eleven, or we see injuries right off the bat. Has there been any really news on uh, on David Bingham as far as uh, since you guys picked him up on the lottery? Uh, has there been any news as far as how well he's performed in the off season? Uh, word is he's been solid, but I believe that Andrew Weber has solidified his spot as the number two keeper by everything I've heard at this point. Um, I must admit, I, they've not been in the area all that much. I haven't even had a chance to really see the team. I, I've seen a couple of practices, a couple of scrimmages out at their training facility, and that's about it. Yeah. Um, and he's certainly in there, but I think uh, it looks like it's Bush and then Weber. Bingham's probably coming up underneath that for the time being. Hmm. Well, we're getting down to our last uh, few minutes already, unbelievably. Um, but can you give us sort of um, your expectations, reasonable expectations for the team uh for the season, are you going to make the playoffs? Um, if so, how far down the line? Yeah, I think I think it's very realistic to say that we're we're headed to the playoffs this year. I think um, last year wasn't a fluke. I think uh, the team was doing a lot of things right as we got to the the latter part of the season, and despite a lot of injuries, uh, they started to really find a form and a style of play that was getting results for them. So I think that part would definitely should be considered a, a strong. Playoff candidate, and I would—I don't think we'll be squeaking in, in you know, the the bottom of the table. I think we put us, you know, pretty solidly in the top. I don't know, three or four positions there in the West. Um, that said, um, I, I kind of think things like U.S. Open Cup. We traditionally don't uh, field a uh, first team for that competition. Mm-hmm. Frank always uses it as an opportunity to play his his uh, second team. Yeah. So I don't expect us to make much of a statement there, and. And this team kind of has an annoying habit of dropping points during the season that they shouldn't drop. <laughs> you know, uh, things like wins become ties and ties become losses because of lapses in judgment, you know, late in games. And, and losing those points, I think, is the difference between being a supporter shield winner and being, you know, just somebody who does well and gets into the playoffs. 
And so, you know, I can't really see us challenging for the supporter shield at this point. Right. You've really, you really just described uh, Chicago's past couple seasons. I mean, especially <laughs> two, se- yeah. two and three seasons ago, but... Brett, you so always much. have to bring up Chicago. I do. <laughs> I do. I, I'm, I'll bring them up. I'll, I'll pivot them out. And... Well, you know, before we, 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 we get on two things, though, uh, Mike. Mm-hmm. One, tell us about the excitement about the new stadium coming on. And number two, anything special that um, the fans have planned, the fan groups have planned as far as TIFO, et cetera, um, for this season? Yeah, I mean, well, the big news, uh, obviously, today, and it really overshadows so much of what's happening on the field, is that demolition finally begun on the old buildings on the site where the earthquake stadium is supposed to be uh, built. And um, they're saying it's going to be about a two- to three-month process of demolition. There's a huge tank factory there where they used to build the, the Bradley fighting vehicle. And... Uh, and actually, it's right across from the San Jose airport. And when they held, held the ceremonies this afternoon, they actually rolled out a Bradley fighting vehicle before they started the uh, re- demolition and wrecking of the building. Nice. And uh, it had a, a bunch of our players in there in hard hats that jumped out the back and started kicking soccer balls into the crowd <laughs> from the back of a Bradley fighting vehicle. So it's pretty, pretty exciting stuff. A little link to the old times here in the Santa Clara Valley in the San Jose area. Um, you know, the permits have been filed with the city. Uh, we hear that the drawings continue to evolve and that the plans continue to evolve. It's gone from a stripped-down, smaller venue. Uh, we, we start to hear that maybe the capacity is, is moving up uh, north of 15,000 now, maybe in the 18,000 range. Um, we're hearing that luxury boxes, which were originally ruled out, might actually be back in play. Um, there's a lot of discussion, but, but what they do agree on is that it's going to be a very intimate venue, uh, European style, uh, covered seating area, um, probably only 20 rows deep from the front of the field to the, the back of the, um, the seats. Great. So uh, pretty pretty unique, pretty interesting little place that they're planning to put together. Absolutely. And uh, as far as TIFO goes and any plans that the uh, fan groups have uh, for the coming season? <laughs> Uh, so far, all I'm hearing about are road trips. Um, you know, we've got our usual road trips down to L.A. and probably Seattle. Um, I know there's some discussion with the Ultras about hitting the new West Coast teams, you know, visiting Portland, visiting Vancouver. Ooh, um, yeah. And we'd certainly like to get up to Vancouver with uh, with uh, our old fan favorite, Joe Cannon, heading up there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but so far, the, the, it's just all talk. We don't really have anything officially on the books for that yet. You know they have they they have a whole thing out there about shooting Joe Cannon out of a cannon. Have you heard about that yet? I haven't heard that yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we actually we we talked to them about that, and that's one of their uh, their uh, I don't know what you call that a media sort of uh, get the word out about the team. Shoot Joe Cannon out of a cannon. Crazy as it sounds. <laughs> Well, you know, they'll have to be careful because we always refer to Joe here as the uh, future mayor of San Jose. So they got to make sure they don't hurt him because he's got a life in politics, and I'm sure it's right back here in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area when he's done playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got to get Joe on the show. Um, I want to, Mike. I want to thank you for coming on. It's been uh, again one of the fastest uh, 20 minutes uh, known to man, and uh, we want to have you on uh, throughout the season if possible. Sure, I'd be happy to. This is a lot of fun. Absolutely, and it's the fast. As I said, it's it's the funnest twenty minutes as well. Uh, if I didn't say that before, <laughs> sounds great. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Same here, Mike. Take care. <laughs>